Rub up your engines! Let me tell you the real truth about gasoline. In most areas of the United States, there is one refiner, okay? So the gas in that area all comes from the one refinery. It's turned from barrels of oil into gasoline and other products, right? The only difference is, theoretically, fuel brands mix in additives when their tankers are loaded at the fuel terminal. All regular grade and premium grade gasolines in any given area use the same base fuel. Theoretically, they put additives when they fill them up. Well, we know how that goes. Maybe the guy was in a hurry, he didn't put the additives in. How many additives do they actually put in? Guess what, people? They won't tell you, they won't tell me, they won't tell anyone. And you know what their excuse is at these big oil companies? Oh, these fuel additives are expensive. We don't want to start a fuel additive war where we're all going to be uh, pricing against each each other baloney they're all in it together where they probably put the smallest amount of additives they possibly can in if at all nobody tests this stuff in the long run nobody really goes to the gas pumps and pulls it out and says hey how much additives are in this nobody does once in a blue moon a government guy will come in to the gas stations and they'll measure to see are they cheating you they will get a gallon graduated cylinder and they'll pump a gallon out and see is it high is it low are they doing it correctly are they cheating people are they charging for a gallon of gas but they're only giving you nine tenths of a gallon of gas right those things are tested even then it's not very often right but nobody goes in to test to see what additives have actually been added to most of the stuff so don't be too carried away with oh this gas is better than that gas because it's all the same basic gasoline from the same refinery it's just that theoretically they throw additives in when they fill them up i have my uh, qualms about do they actually do it right do they put the right amount in you know maybe the guy forgot to have coffee anymore and he forgets to put the additives in who knows dang man says scotty 2011 fusion three liter i fill it up the gas tank then it overflows any ideas next okay you probably need a new evap canister vent valve if the vent valve sticks then it will We'll fill the tank up too much and the gas will surge out <laughs> spill out right the evap canister vent valve is supposed to vent the vapors while you're filling the car up you might also need a new evap canister assembly who knows right but one of those things is wrong they're supposed to vent as you fill the gas well what does the gas do it fills up the tank the tank had air in it the air's got to go somewhere and if the vent valve isn't working right it'll push back out and then the gas will go all over the place so check those things first trucks in more new jersey says scotty what's a better choice of engine 2.7 liter turbo 4 or 4.3 liter v6 for silverado 1500 personally i'd go for a v8 but i would definitely go for the v6 before the turbo four cylinder engine it's not made for pulling a big have a truck I've seen them blow at 60,000 miles from customers of mine that bought the things and then use them as actual trucks now if you drive like a turtle you're not pulling any weight you don't fill the bed full of sand and gravel all the time maybe if you don't go fast you, you wouldn't care about a four-cylinder but it won't last as long you're best with the v8 but out of those choices I'd get the v6 David Gonzalez says Scotty I got a 2008 Tundra only shifts into first and second is it okay to drive it until the tranny goes out will it mess up the engine I only drive it on normal roads not on the freeways well go ahead you just see how fast the engine's revving now the engine will wear out a little bit faster because you're spinning at a higher rpm but if you're not taking it on the highway at highway speeds what the heck keep driving it you know but you might have a guy like me look at it you might need a shift solenoid it could be like the three four four five shift solenoids are bad and then you just drop the pan put new shift solenoids and that could fix it it might not be that big of a deal those transmissions are relatively bulletproof and it could just be that simple that it needs a shift solenoid or maybe it's clogged up and it needs cleaning out new filter and fluid then it'll go back to shifting again mr sonic says scotty does the 08 trailblazer have electrical problems well all gm products generally have electrical problems throughout time gm has had ground fault problems now realize your entire vehicle is negative electricity the negative terminal the battery bolts to the metal all the metals negative electricity all the wires are positive electricity gm has had a history of problems with their grounding systems where they don't get the ground power and then they become hellacious problems to figure out because once you have a ground problem you get a ground problem the brake lights that make make your horn blow when you step on the brakes so yes they do have problems one reason I tell people you don't want to buy one and try to keep it for a long time because eventually the electronics break down it costs a fortune Edwin Villarreal says 2011 Chevy Silverado 5.3 I have the intake camshaft position performance code p0011 okay 
Well, I know those things inside out. And one of two things is probably going wrong. Either your variable valve timing is breaking down or your timing chain is wearing out and you will get a performance problem. But a guy like me, we put our fancy scandal, we can do bi-directional test, right? I tested one the other day and it turns out that it was a variable valve timing camshaft system was breaking down. That is a very expensive repair. If it was just a worn timing chain, it's still not cheap, but it's cheaper than replacing a variable cam timing system. So have it tested, don't guess. There's a problem in that system, but you need a scan tool that does bi-directional testing. We do tests, then we look at the that and we say okay look we're supposed to make it go advanced now it's not advancing even though our computer told it to advance well no well that system's broken ryan says scotty help i got an 04 toyota camry 2.4 liter i replaced the battery and remanufactured alternate still the voltage regulator failed help okay well the voltage regulator is built into the alternator realize almost every alternator you buy these days are rebuilt or remanufactured a lot of times they're not good right from the factory floor because they have idiots doing them a lot of them come from mexico or they do horrible work rebuilding stuff. Could just be a bad alternator. If not, you got a wiring problem. Can you replace the battery? If the wiring going to the alternator is bad, if the alternator isn't grounded correctly, it'll make the alternator burn the regulator out. So you either have a wiring problem or you just got a bad alternator. From my experience, it's a Toyota. More often than not, it's just you got a crappy rebuilt alternator. But do check the wiring, especially the ground wiring. From a negative terminal to the body of the car, to the engine block, and to the alternator. You can get a meter, you can test it all to see if it got problems. Doug Harding says, does Mazda Sky Active technology prevent carbon buildup on the intake valves? I would say that it does because I have yet to see any Mazdas that had carbon buildup that I worked on. Right now, if you have one and you're getting three, four hundred thousand miles and that starts to break down, you're going to be lucky if you can find anybody that's going to know how to fix the thing because it's a very complex feedback mechanism. But it is a pretty good design. It gets a lot of power and good gas mods. It is high technology. A lot of stuff's in it, but they don't have a problem like, say, the Volkswagens do. Rock says, Scotty, what's a better choice, a used Nissan Frontier or a used Ford Ranger? Well, of course, it depends on how they were taken care of. But if they were both taken care of exactly the same, I get a Nissan Frontier. I just checked one out the other day, had 170,000 miles, still ran like a top, didn't burn oil. Now, they're all trucks. They're all gas hogs. You're not going to get good gas mods in either one of them. But last year, Nissan Frontiers outsold Ford Rangers in the United States. Of course, Toyota Tacoma, if they sold 56,000 Rangers, they sold like 200,000 Tacomas. The Tacomas are better than both of them, right? But I would say Tacoma, Frontier, then Ranger in one, two, three, and how much they're worth. So take that and see what you want to do with it. Craig Berberich says, what's the best way to seal a rear differential cover up? I tried everything and it all seems to leak. All right, take the cover off, clean it all off. And there is a gasket material called the right stuff company called Permatex makes it. Expensive gasket maker indeed. But clean both sides, put that on, it will not leak. Now, if it leaks after that, it won't be your cover that's leaking. It'll be either the seals on the side or the front main shaft seal that's leaking. It can leak in many different places. But if it's the cover that's leaking, the right stuff sealer will seal it. It's the best sealer on the world. It's very expensive, but it does work quite well. Quadrajet says, Scotty, should I convert my 1976 Buick Century 350 to fuel injection? Well, you want to get a little bit better gas mileage and power? Go ahead. There are companies out there that make bolt-on systems. My grandson just put one on his 350 Camaro engine. You can buy the whole kit and it just bolts on where the carburetor was and it turns it into a fuel-injected car. You'll see there's various manufacturers that design the things and build the things. They make fuel-injected systems that you can buy that will bolt onto those things if you want to go through the trouble. Now, you got to put an oxygen sensor on and you got to put on the little computer that it comes with, but it comes with the whole kit. So, I mean, hey, gotta give it a try. His Camaro runs like a scalded ape now. He wanted to do it for speed. And if you want a little bit better gas mileage and more speed, go ahead. Haji says, are ice cream trucks reliable vehicles? Depends who makes them. You may or may not believe this, but when I was in London, England, I saw a Mercedes Benz ice cream truck. Yes, indeed, it was a Mercedes-Benz ice cream truck, right? It was a diesel. I'm sure it was probably a pretty good truck. It depends on what the base truck is. Now, if you're talking about buying an old ice cream truck and turning it into a camper or a food truck or something, generally you buy a used one. They have the living heck beat out of them. And ice cream trucks are often driven by young kids for their summer break jobs. They don't take care of them. They beat the heck out of them. So they could be rolling piles of junk. If you're going to buy a used one, make sure mechanic checks out. But there's so many different brands. It depends on the brand. 
right? Like, for example, if I was going to buy one in the United States, I wouldn't buy a Chevy. I'd buy a Ford ice cream truck because they tend to be more reliable. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.